first, our big story. I'd like to dedicate my performance and this award to the transgender community. Last night at the Emmys, actor Jeffrey Tambor won Best Actor in a Comedy for Transparent. The TV show is about how a Los Angeles family copes with their father after he comes out as being transgender. Which sounds a lot like Caitlyn Jenner's family and the issues they face on Jenner's reality show. Both shows are about coming out later in life, but the reality is teens and even children are transitioning. Over the next few days, Debbie Chart is going to introduce us to six local teens. You may find that their stories are an eye-opening look at real life. I had known that I was a boy since third grade, and that's when we lived in Illinois. Jay says it took a while to figure out what transgender meant. He was in the fifth grade when there was a lot of buzz about the pregnant man. So I asked my parents, and um, they explained what transgender was. And I was like, oh, that's a thing. I'm not just some tomboy that really, really, really wants to be a guy. Jay transitioned the beginning of his freshman year in high school. Charlie came out mid-freshman year, so everyone knew him by his birth name. And I was really scared, because even coming out to my parents, who I knew would be supportive, or coming out to my friends, it's scary, because you don't know what to expect. Charlie says things are going well, but feels if he'd come out in middle school, it would have been very different. The staff is just kind of like, what do we do? So they just kind of stick to what they know, and they really don't know much. Middle schooler Gabriel can vouch for that. His mom says Gabriel's privacy was violated after Gabe confided with adults at school. His friend, his group of friends, found out about it before he could even have the opportunity to come out to them. Not acceptable, she says. He wanted to do it when he was ready. Um, most of my friends have been really supportive, and I think they kind of saw it coming from even before I even realized it. Many of these kids say middle school is already a scary and emotional place, then add the stress of coming out. Luke's mom says a counselor told him not to. His first day of high school, he wore a he-shirt. I wasn't afraid at that time. I just felt like it needed to be heard. Luke tried to start a middle school support group, but met too many obstacles. Sabian met more success with a support group at his high school. The decision to come out to family and friends is daunting. I was terrified that everyone would be looking at me and be mean to me and stuff like that, and everything went fine, really. Transitioning in school around people they've known is the hardest. Because people watch you change and they think of you as just the weird kid who was a boy last week or a girl last week and now you're wearing different clothes and have a different hairstyle. Sarah, now a sophomore, transferred out of school saying it was too much of a fight when she told her new friends. They were like, oh, well, it's fine. Nothing's different now. You're still the same person to me. Parents want to protect their kids. That's why I think it's very important for set policies to be in place so it's not a come as it handle it as it comes basis. Policies experts say are needed at every level of the school system. Gender identity is something that starts developing the minute a, a child starts developing a personality. So I think that um, anyone who comes into contact with, with students no, at all grade levels, K through 12, needs to have training. Five national organizations, including the National Education Association, have put together this new policy guide for schools. It's called Schools in Transition. And since it's so new, local school districts haven't adopted it. Now, these are the emails I got back from Charleston, Berkeley, and Dorchester District 2. DD2 does not have a policy on transgender students. They do have services and support for them, depending on the needs of the student. A Charleston County spokesman says, it is district policy for all students to have the same educational opportunities and accommodations can be made if the parents have some concerns. And Berkeley County says they respect the gender identity of all students and accommodations are based on a student's needs. We're still waiting for clarification from DD4. Lisa Raphael. So, uh -huh. so what uh, what sort of recommend? I mean, we can see here in the studio just how thick that yeah. is, too. You know, we've posted this online so people can go look, but it um, ranges from everything from the bathroom right. to locker rooms. And basically, they want transgender kids treated the same. And if 
any child has an issue, that that is the child who should go to a different bathroom. And um, it's really interesting, an interesting read, but it's pretty thick. So go to our website. Interesting point of view that we don't always hear from. Exactly. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see just how many of their fellow students just seem to say, you know, oh, they're just my friend, no matter no matter who they we'll are. We'll have more tomorrow. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Debbie. On to our big story this half hour. That's right, Kyle. It was last night uh, we introduced you to six transgender students here locally who have struggled or who are struggling to be accepted at uh, area middle and high schools. Debbie Chard shared their coming out stories with you. And now she's taking a more in-depth look at the challenges that come after coming out. When he came out, they said they'd never even had anybody come out that was gay. And so they were all completely uneducated. Sarah's 13-year-old son, Gabriel, is in middle school. Not many of them understand or even have heard of transgender before. What Gabriel and the five other students share in common, they don't identify with the gender they were assigned at birth. These students have transitioned, like celebrities Chaz Bono, Jazz Jennings, Laverne Cox, and Caitlyn Jenner. We're all different. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Jenner's award for courage. It's not that much of a help for middle schoolers because not a lot of them are reading about Caitlyn Jenner and stuff like that. Gabriel's mother says he's been bullied at school and shamed by the school bus driver who separated student riders by gender. Calling the driver's supervisor, his mother says she was asked inappropriate questions. He was asking me to verify over and he was born female, but he's now male. Did he have a sex change? That's no one's business, she says. What matters is their identity. Even their name changes cause them problems. She got in trouble for it. Sarah is talking about a teacher who was told not to use Sarah's preferred name. It happened in middle school. No teachers were allowed to call me by something that's not a version of my first, middle, or last name. So I was no longer allowed to be called Sarah. Now 15 and a sophomore, Sarah is president of her high school class. Things are much better. It's crazy, amazing difference because as soon as I got to Berkeley Middle School, they immediately changed my name in Power School. Power School is the school district's electronic record, a huge source of pain for transgender students. Right now, my name isn't legally changed yet, so I had this incident recently. 15-year-old Luke says his legal name appeared on the smart board in class. He had the roster posted on the board and everyone saw my legal name. I also have had um, yearbook trouble. My name wasn't changed in the yearbook. Or in the office when he signs out of school. Here I am hearing my, my legal name again. So what's that like for you? like they're stabbing me in the back. Luke uses these to explain how his new identity hasn't changed the person inside. So the kids in the halls will call him Luke. There should be no resistance to changing it in the student ID, the yearbook, and any of those things. Every kid has the right to go by a preferred name. It's expensive to legally change your name. The families of these kids argue society accepts people who go by something other than their birth name. Lady Gaga is a famous example. Another issue, the pronouns. And no one's called me by he. The best I can do is just tell people who ask me and try to explain it, but most people aren't that accepting. Some kids find an atmosphere of acceptance at high school in student support groups. I just thought it would have been a lot easier if there had been people to go to at the school. Support for the kids and the families also comes from an organization, We Are Family. The group offers training for schools, but local districts aren't taking advantage. More and more kids are coming out as transgender, and our, our infrastructure is just not there to support that. The school districts tell us they work with individual students based on their needs. Debbie Chard, Live 5 News. And coming up tomorrow at 7.30, the extremes some of those students go to just to go to the bathroom at school. Plus, you may be surprised at the recommendations for sharing school bathrooms and locker rooms with transgender students.
According to the National Education Association, more and more schools are being called upon to support transgender students. California law actually requires schools to provide restrooms consistent with the student's gender identity. One elementary school there has taken it a step further, becoming the first in the nation to convert all restrooms to gender-neutral facilities. But as our Debbie Chard found in our state, school bathrooms still a major issue, creating anxiety, sometimes even serious illness for some of those transgender students. I'm an honor student, so I don't I really can't be missing class. Charlie calculates when to use the bathroom. I can't be 20 minutes away from class for just to go to the bathroom that I could be using right around the corner. But Charlie isn't allowed to use that boy's bathroom. He trucks to the nurse's room. It's the same issue for Luke. The real reason why they don't want you to use the bathroom is so that a, a parent doesn't come and complain to you, to the school board. The 15-year-old is also an honors student who has suffered urinary tract infections, holding off going to the bathroom, afraid he'd miss something important in class. Another high schooler, Jay, tries to wait till he gets home, but when nature calls, he stealths out a place to go. Basically, I will go to the girls' bathroom if there's really no one to see me because I pass pretty well as a guy. Not the boys' bathroom? It's just this irrational thought that do I still look like a girl? They might notice something sort of thing. Middle schooler Gabriel is required to go to the nurse's office, which he says raises a lot of questions from his classmates. It took a while for the school to decide where he was allowed to go. They won't let me use the men's bathroom. They, at first they said no, and then they changed their mind and said yes, and they changed again and said no. The girls' restroom in 15-year-old Sarah's high school is off limits for her, too. And I use the staff restrooms, and they have one at the end of every hallway, but some of my classes are very far away from this bathroom. Gender-appropriate bathrooms should not be off limits, according to the Schools in Transition Policy, co-authored by the National Education Association. Transgender students, it says, should never be forced to use alternative facilities to make other students comfortable. In fact, it says students who aren't comfortable sharing facilities with a transgender student should be the ones using the faculty or nurses' bathrooms. For locker rooms, privacy curtains are suggested for any student or schedules allowing the student to change before or after other students. As far as the staff and administration goes, they need to be more educated on transgender rights. Saying the districts are flying by the seat of their pants, parents want a plan. If there is procedure and policy of how to handle it, then we don't have to fight. We don't have to, you know, say, well, let's see what we can do, or it's just the way it is. Melissa Moore is with the support group We Are Family. Policy needs to be changed um, so that there is non-discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity for staff members. Um, for students, uh, also mandatory trainings for all staff members, everyone who comes into contact with the students. Moore says there are no tools to measure how many transgender students there are in the Lowcountry, but experts say it's important for schools to be prepared for the growing trend of transgender students living openly. Debbie Chard, Live 5 News. And you can see all three of our reports with the Lowcountry transgender teens by heading over to our website, live5news.com.